Look, you stay there. I'll get an ambulance. How long has it been like this? About 15, 20 minutes. Did he complain of any chest pain? He was holding his chest, but he didn't seem to be in any pain. He's just very, very confused. He's tachycardic, which means his heart's racing, and he's got a very irregular heartbeat. Bob? Yeah. You've had some kind of attack, and we need to get you to the hospital. When I had my first AF attack, I had no idea what was happening. All of a sudden, my heart was racing, I got breathless, I couldn't breathe. It was the most terrifying thing I've ever had happen to me in my life. Get hold of a &E, let them know that we've got a 62-year-old male with suspected AF. His blood pressure's really low. It's 80 over 60. I was really not sure whether I was going to live or die because I didn't know what had happened. Just stay with us. He's been a little confused. He collapsed whilst decorating and his wife fortunately found him inside. Okay. Atrial fibrillation. It's getting faster, 180. Is this his first episode? According to the paramedic, his wife said he's never had anything like this before. Yeah, he's compromised. Let's cardioavert him. Clear. He's back in sinus. Do a 12 lead ECG. I'll take another look at him in about 45 minutes. Patients with atrial fibrillation often have to go to hospital because, for example, they develop symptoms like palpitations that need urgent treatment, or they may develop stroke, or they may develop serious heart failure. Since my first attack, I've actually been three times in hospital for ablation procedure and three times for cardioversions. When the hospital called him back for another one, one of my sons took him to the station and he told me later, he waved goodbye to him at the station and he said, Mum, I didn't know if I was going to see Dad again. I felt terrible. And I've been through exactly the same thing. You never know what's going to happen. And it's the not knowing that's the worst thing about AF. I got very depressed and very, very scared. It, it, it's such a, a frightening thing to happen to you. And because you don't look ill a lot of the time, people don't realise just how weak uh, you can be. It can really make you into something of a prisoner in your own home. It's terrible the way his self-esteem has gone down and down. <laughs> He can't take part in vintage car races anymore, which was his great love. He's an engineer, and it's really too heavy for him now. He's only just into his 60s, but it's like he's living the life of an invalid. I don't always know when I'm going to have an attack. You could be walking down the street. There doesn't seem to be any particular trigger for it. It just happens. Some patients with atrial fibrillation have a condition which is easily treatable. But in many instances, the atrial fibrillation is a chronic disorder. They're admitted time and time again to the hospital in order to sort out the rhythm disturbance or the complications of the rhythm disturbance. Thank you. Well, it wasn't like I was rushed to hospital in an ambulance or anything. I got out of bed one morning, started feeling sick. I thought I'd lost my footing because I came over very faint. I stayed in bed all day because I was so frightened of what had happened to me. It happened again a couple of months later. I went to the GP. He didn't know what was wrong, so he referred me to a specialist at the hospital. I had an MRI scan and a hearing test. He couldn't find anything wrong. So I carried on for about six months and had another attack. It took two years before a neurologist finally told me that I'd got heart problems. It was very distressing because I hadn't got the energy to do things like I used to do. Since I was diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, I've been backwards and forwards to the hospital and doctors so many times, I've lost count. Once I was diagnosed, I was given beta blockers and warfarin. 
I was on those for six months, but it didn't make any difference. I was on a stronger drug after that. Um, made me feel worse, tired all the time. Well, I've got the results of your ECG, and unfortunately it shows that you are back in AF. Now, that tells me that the medication you're on isn't doing the trick. Now, all I can suggest is we put you on some fresh medication to control the AF, mm. and we'll just have to have you back in for some more tests, unfortunately. OK, more tests. Right. I've always been very independent, but I've had to rely a lot on my friends and relatives for lifts and help. When I was unable to drive, I had to ask a relative to take, or relatives to take time off work to take me to hospital. Family life can be very disrupted, and of course the complications of atrial fibrillation can be quite devastating. The future do, it does cause a worry, because the one thing that that terrifies me more than anything else is stroke. I'd like to see my boys married and I'd like to see grandchildren one day. Yes, I worry what's going to happen to me in the future. I'm worried about a stroke. I'm worried about a heart attack. I'm worried that if I have to give up my job, my financial security would be in jeopardy.